Our ingredients are 4 tablespoons cold water, 1 tablespoon sugar that's optional, salt to taste, enough warm water to use as required when kneading your dough, 2 cups all-purpose flour, you can substitute 1 cup with 1 cup whole wheat flour, 80 grams sourdough starter, and 1 tablespoon vegetable oil. And so we will start by thinning our sourdough starter with cold water because at the moment the way it is it's too thick and it's going to give us problems when we add it to our all-purpose flour. And so scoop your starter and put it in a separate container. See how thick it is? It's almost like pancake butter. And then come and add your two tablespoons of cold water. Make sure that it's cold water because if it's hot water, it's going to kill the yeast. And then take your sourdough starter and feed it before setting it aside. Add 2 tablespoons of all-purpose flour and 2 tablespoons of cold water. Mix everything thoroughly. Make sure that there are no flour pockets left. And then cover and set aside in a warm place to use later. Now let's start kneading our dough. Add your flour to your mixing bowl your sugar and salt and your oil and then rub everything together until crumbly and then start by adding your thinned sourdough starter Don't start by adding your water because if you add your water, you might end up not using all your sourdough starter. So make sure you first add your sourdough starter and then add your warm water as required. Do not be hasty when adding your warm water. Just take your time, go adding little by little until all your dough comes together in one big bowl. Then roll it over on the counter and knead for about 10 minutes until the dough is nice, silky and soft. And then return it to the container that you used for kneading. Rub oil on it. Cover with a plastic wrap or a damp towel and set aside for about 12 hours for the dough to proof and rise. And so here is my dough after 12 hours. It's soft and it's bouncy. It's also quite malleable and it stretches a lot like pizza dough. And so I placed it on the counter so that I could prepare my chapatis. Now, I'm going to show you three ways that you can make chapatis in your home and feel free to pick any method that is best suited to your needs. I started by dividing my dough into two equal portions. I set one aside, covered it, the remaining one I rolled as wide as my countertop could possibly allow and don't worry it's I'm not going to cook such a huge chapati I don't have such a huge pan anyway this method is best suited when you want to roll out as many chapatis as you possibly can in 
as little amount of time as possible so apply oil and sprinkle flour because this will help in keeping your layers separate and this ensures that your chapatis are going to come out light and airy so after rolling roll again into balls this will give you four balls if you want your smaller chapatis roll into smaller balls bigger ones roll into less balls the second method that i'm going to show you also involves you applying oil but it means that you're going to work on one chapati at a time not like the first method where we worked on many chapatis at a go and so first apply oil after rolling your dough sprinkle flour again to keep your layers separate and distinct and then proceed to roll it into a conical shape like you're seeing me do here after you're done pull that tail and tuck it in and then take your tip and press it down and there is your ball of dough and the third method is where we will use no oil at all just to show you that you can have soft chapatis without using oil oil is not a necessary part in having soft chapatis it's more of your technique and then cover all your balls and leave them for 30 minutes to rest so after 30 minutes come and roll out your dough I rolled mine to a diameter of 6 inches and this is the thickness you are looking for not too thin not too thick we will start by cooking the chapati that had no oil place it on your preheated pan and proceed to cook it until all the sides are done to your liking and as i'm lifting it you can see the way it's easily bending demonstrating that it's soft and pliable see how soft it looks well it was soft for real and then the second method is um, cooking the chapati that was oiled again place it on your preheated pan and wait for the color to become dark on top and the bubbles to rise as you're seeing them rise and then that's when you will come and turn it over and apply oil on the exposed side don't put too much oil because the chapatis are going to be too oily after flipping it over apply oil on this exposed side as well and cook your chapati until all the sides are done to your liking and then take it off the heat and so here are my chapatis they turned out very beautifully and they were perfect for me and you might be wondering how do sour chapatis taste well they have a sharper and more acidic uh, taste than you'd get when you have uh, the crust of a pizza but that's not to say that it's an unpleasant taste i quite enjoyed it and i had my sour chapatis with tea and later on with my beef curry so if you've learned something from my experiences please subscribe rate and share this thank you for watching until next time goodbye